Hello Whistlers everywhere. Um, so today I thought I would have a chat about learning tunes and getting them into your memory so that you don't have to use the music. Uh, it's come up quite a number of times recently. Uh, a number of my students have been asking me, how do I learn it off by heart? Do I have to learn it by ear? Is that the only way to learn it off by heart? And the answer is yes and no. Um, yes, you have to be able to play it from memory and no, you don't have to be able to play it and learn the tune by ear. It does help because if you learn it directly by ear, it tends to go into your memory a bit easier for some people than um, being able to read it and sometimes that can be a bit of a struggle if you're having to read. It all depends on what kind of memory works best for you. Some people are visual. They learn better by seeing things written down. And some people are better at learning things by ear. Um, they struggle reading or maybe find it easier to learn uh, to learn the tune by ear rather than to read it. And if you fall into the latter category, um, then that's great. Then you don't really need to learn to read music. Uh, it does help. Uh, it does help to learn a piece, especially if you can look at the dots, look at the music and be able to hear what's happening in the music. And that's a really good thing to be able to do. To be able to sight read or sight hear, which is what's more important, is to look at a piece of music and to be able to hear it in your head. Then that's the best of kind of both worlds. So I think it's important to be able to read music but it's just as important to be able to pick things up by ear. So a combination of both is important. So a number of uh, helpful tips to get the music from off the page and into your memory. First and foremost, you need to get inside the music before the music gets inside you. And uh, a very wise old fellow told me that many years ago. Um, and for the music to get inside you, there's a number of different techniques that we can use and we can employ. Um, so if you're a really visual learner, one of the things you can do is to look at the shape of what the music is doing and try and visualize that when you are playing. So if I take a tune like the Kesh jig, there's certain repeating patterns which happen over the piece so you don't have to learn all the piece what you can do is learn those repeating patterns so what we have on the first bit of the cache so if i've got those two bars get those learned and then then the second part of the a part is a repeat pretty much of the first part so you got so you got that repeating pattern again and just so one of the really helpful things to help you to get a tune into your head to memorize it is to look at repeating patterns and learn those repeating patterns and learn where they repeat within the music. So with the A part, the Kesh jig, I've got those two bars which repeat at the beginning and then on the second line. So I've got that. So I've already got those first two bars and they repeat, as I said, in the second line of the tune. So, and then the, It's just two bars which we need to add on to that. So we've got the first line. So with the second line, I've got repeated the first part again. So, and then just a slight difference in the ending. 
So again, it's helpful to look at repeating patterns and a lot of the traditional music, there are many patterns which repeat. Um, in fact, with the tune, Wind That Shakes the Barley, there's lots of repetition in that. So if you look at that one, The A part, second time, is almost identical apart from one note. So if you think about the first line. And the second line is almost a direct repeat of that. Which goes up rather than down. So you'll find that a lot of the traditional tunes have got lots of repeated patterns. So listen out for those repeating patterns and it will help you to learn and memorize those tunes if you can learn those repeating patterns. So another big mistake that a lot of people make is when they're trying to memorize a tune off the paper is to try and memorize the whole tune and don't try and eat the whole cake in one go as they say. Um, small bite size chunks great idea maybe learn a couple of bars maybe memorize a couple of bars so again if we look at the cash jig yeah on the B part maybe that's enough maybe that's enough to memorize it so repetition is important repeat it Look at the music again if you need to, and then go back to that line. Yeah, and once you've got it, if you forget it, go back, look at the dots, and then go back and play it again. And also, if you can, and I find this very helpful, try and see the dots, the music in front of you, or even just the first few notes. Try and use that, if you're a visual learner like I am, try and see the music in your mind's eye or even the first few bars as a little pointer to how the tune's going to go. So what I sometimes do is I think of just try and memorize visually the first bar and that's a sort of memory jogger. So repeating patterns and also not trying to do the whole tune in one go small bite-sized chunks um, and that's another good way um, so in order for the music or the tune to get inside you um, it takes a little bit of time uh, for some people it takes a very short time and for some people it may take a bit longer but the more you do it the easier it will become um, and that's how you memorize hundreds and hundreds of tunes if you need to. Um, lots of tunes are very similar um, and sometimes even me I find myself sometimes because of the similarity of a number of tunes I'll start one tune and somehow I'll end up playing another tune which is very similar uh, and unfortunately that can happen from time to time but a good way to prevent that is to play the two tunes together and then listen for the differences. Um, and so if you play uh, a tune one way and then you play the second tune, which sometimes you end up getting confused with, a good thing to do is put them together and make a little set of them, a set of jigs or a set of reels, and then listen for the differences. And that's really important. So compare and contrast the two tunes which are similar and listen how they differ and where they differ. Uh, and there are a couple of tunes which are very similar in the structure and very similar in how they move but have slight differences. So if you compare them and then contrast them uh, and try and memorize them that way, uh, I find that I can do that on a number of tunes that are very similar in structure and very similar in composition. Um, so getting the tune into your memory will take time especially if you're new to it so don't expect to be able to do it quickly 
Uh, it may take a day, it may take a number of days, it may take a week or even longer. But persistence and continuity are absolutely important. Consistency is really, really important. It's the same as anything else. The more you do it, the better at it you get. So if you can set aside a small portion of your time to try and memorize the tunes that you've been practicing. And again, look at the music, play maybe the first few bars and then try and play them without looking. And then once you can do that, add a bar. So if I'm doing the cash jig, for instance, um, I'll maybe, all right, my, my goal is to do the two bars, the first two bars. So here we go. Okay, I've done that. So I'm going to add one more bar and see if I can do that from memory. So I'm going to go. And put them together. Okay, well how's the last bar go? Okay, here we go. And then keep adding an additional bar until you've got the first line. So. Well, I can play the first two bars of the first line, first two bars of the second line, exactly the same. And then I've got. And now suddenly I can play the whole of the A part of the cash jig. So always start off with something easy and something which has got lots of repetition. As I say, lots of repeating patterns. Listen out for the repeating patterns and try and add them. Um, I mentioned previously about when we practice, to practice the bits we can't do and put them on a loop. And I've found that by doing that, not only does it help your technique and help you to uh, practice the things which you're struggling with uh, in motor skills and moving and like taps and rolls and cuts, but it also helps get it inside here. Because the more you do it, eventually you'll find you don't need to look at any music at all. You've suddenly learnt the tune as if by magic. And as if by magic, that's how it goes. Um, how long the magic takes, again, is very much dependent upon you and your abilities to hear the tunes and learn the patterns. But hey, don't worry about it. It takes as long as it takes. Um, the idea is the more you push it, the more difficult it will be. It's almost by a process of osmosis that you'll eventually learn that the music that's on the page that you've been reading suddenly becomes the music inside your head and you can hear it and you can sing it and then you can play it on whistle. Um, so the other thing is not to become too reliant on the music by that. It means don't always try and read the tune or always make sure when you play it, you always have to have the music in front of you. Um, it's okay to do that at the beginning when you're learning a piece, but the goal is to get the music from the paper into you. And it's a good idea to try and do a little bit of that, as I said, in your practice session. You don't have to do the whole lot. You don't have to learn the whole piece. Um, but maybe if you, you set a goal, say, right, by the end of this practice session of this tune that I'm working on, say, the Kesh Jig or the Wind That Shakes the Barley or whatever. By the end of this, I'm going to set aside 10 minutes where I'm going to learn from memory either the first bar, first two bars, first three bars, first four bars, or even the first line. Um, but don't have unrealistic expectations because that will just serve to frustrate you and it's not helpful. Uh, so in short, um, what you need to be able to do is to try, spend a little bit of time uh, when you practice, or even look at the music without your whistle and try and hear how the music goes in your head. And again, like I mentioned earlier on, it's a great skill to be able to look at a piece of music and hear it in your head. And if you can do that, then it saves a lot of time because you can memorize a tune without having a whistle by 
or near. I used to do this years ago when I was um, I was working in a school, and during the lunchtime, uh, I'd, I'd have these music books with me: uh, the Cole Rince Nairn, the uh, the Brendan Branagh books. Um, and I'd be looking at tunes, and I'd be sight hearing them in in my head, looking at them, and, and sort of humming them, or even just hearing how they would go in my head. Um, and I found that was a really useful way of learning tunes. Um, and again, because I'm quite a visual learner, I was able to look at the dots, look at the music, and hear how they would sound on the flute or the whistle or the illum pipes or um, whatever instrument. And I could hear and see how the visual representation of the notes, uh, and I could, sometimes I would just hum it very quietly, um, not too loudly. Um, I didn't want to attract undue attention. But yes, I would hear it and hum it very gently. And I'd actually learn quite a few tunes that way. Um, and then when I'd get home, I'd have the tune in my head and I'd be able to transfer that tune to the pipes or the whistle or flute or whatever. Um, so it's a good skill if you can read music because it can help you to memorize a tune without having any instruments at all. Um, and again, maybe just do a few bars or a couple of lines, whatever you find easy, but the, it's, it's good to be able to have that eye where you can see the music and you can transfer what's happening on the paper into how you hear it in your head. Um, so committing tunes to memory, really, it's one thing that you can't really force and nor should you force. Um, you need the music, that's okay, but eventually, you won't need the music and it's taking that leap of faith and it's easy to use the music as a crutch and and to think that you need to have the music and that you can't play without it but in reality you probably can um, when you get to a point where you can actually hum the tune in your head or you can play the first few bars you'll probably find that you can actually play more by memory than you can actually give yourself credit for. Um, so yeah, don't always have the music with you. Don't always rely on, on the written music. Um, take that leap of faith and have a go. And maybe even if you just don't know the whole piece, maybe if you just know the first few bars, that can be built upon. And I've not met anybody who can't commit tunes to memory. As I said right at the beginning, some people can do it very easily. And if they learn by ear, hear a piece, yeah, they can hear the patterns that they're familiar with. And um, with traditional music, the, the pattern, the always patterns that are familiar and lots of rep repetition and repeated patterns uh, that you'll find come up in many, many different uh, jigs and reels. There's the same figures that will come up. Um, so I think if you can hear them and hear those repeating patterns, uh, then you can say, oh, OK, that's that's that one that's in the Kesh jig. That sounds a bit like that. And so you can sort of piece those different bits of the puzzle together in terms of those repeating patterns. But if you can hear how the patterns fit in to the piece of music that you're trying to learn, it does make things a bit easier. OK. Uh, so just to recap, yeah, don't try and do too much all in one go. Maybe just learn a few bars and then just keep adding to those bars, yeah. Try again as well to look at some music and try and hear it in your head. Just take the music with you wherever. Instead of watching the telly, you could bring a piece of music with you and just uh, have a look at it and uh, try learning it that way. Try learning a new piece, one that you don't know, and try and imagine yourself playing it imaginary practice uh, it sounds a bit crazy this but i used to do this all the time and i still do is i'll look at a piece of music or i'll practice it in my head where i'm closing my eyes and i'm just visualizing myself playing it and believe it or not that does help and it certainly helps uh, when it comes to learning a piece of music if you visualize yourself and you can hear yourself playing it then it does help to learn piece of music and commit it to memory so give it a go have a look at a piece of music see if you can sight read it or sight hear it uh, you can even try sight singing it or humming it um, and then once you've got it 
under your fingers or in your head, you'll find it much easier then to play it on your whistle. Uh, yeah, small bite-sized chunks, don't try and do too much. And again, maybe try when you're practicing, putting things on a loop, yeah, bits on a loop, first two bars, first line, just play the first line, go back again, play it again, and eventually it will stick in your head. Uh, it has to, it will do. Uh, repetition is the key. And the more you do this, the easier it will become. So give it a go. Yeah, even if you're looking at the first two bars, look at the two bars, look away, try playing them, look again, do it that way. So you're just adding a bar each time. Little by little, bit by bit, you will commit it to memory. Okay, folks, so that's a little bit on what I do uh, and the things that I've taught to help people commit tunes to memory. Um, and again, it's like anything else. If you don't use it, you lose it. So if you don't play those tunes, they tend to go and be forgotten into the mists of time. Uh, over the years, I must have learned hundreds, if not thousands of tunes, and I've probably forgotten a fair old few because I haven't played them for so long. And every so often a tune will come up and someone will play and I go, oh, I remember that one. And then I'll go back and replay it. And it's back in my memory banks again. So it slips into the short term memory and then it slips into your long term memory. And then even if you've not played it and it's forgotten from your short term memory, something will happen that you'll hear a tune and it will jog your long term memory and you'll remember it again. So there's different levels and different layers to memory and committing things to memory. So even though it might go into your short term memory, you might forget it the next morning. But once it's into your long term, it's there pretty much forever. You may forget it, forget it for a time or forget that it even exists. And you'll hear a few notes and think, oh, I know that tune. And then you'll forget what it's called. I'm always doing that. Remembering tunes, but I always forget what those tunes are called from time to time. Okay, folks, well, um, if you found this uh, video helpful, which I hope you have, um, perhaps you'd like to subscribe to the Whistleblowers YouTube channel, uh, maybe give it a like, um, and yeah, tell all your friends, your neighbours, your kids, anybody who's interested in Whistle, um, and hopefully I will see you again uh, very shortly. Okay, take care, and happy whistling, folks. Bye for now.